So again, let's wait till it starts recording. There we go. All right. So again, just to just to repeat, our goal for our unit one project, our goal for this task is to find two individuals, two people that we know well, it can be family, it can be friends, colleague. Choose someone that speaks some level of English. And someone that you know well. And. Our goal is to think of the three topics that we have seen. In unit one, number one, beauty, number two, education. Number three, fake news. I'd like for you to choose one of these topics. OK, so think of the two individuals that you know well. The two individuals that speak some level of English and then choose one of these. Three topics that you think. Would be the most appropriate, the most relevant to these people. OK, so you need to rely on your background information, what you already know about these people to help you decide which of these three topics you need to choose. You only need to choose one topic. All right, so again, beauty, some aspects of uh, beauty or education or fake news. Now the role, all right, you're going to be assume that you are a psychologist, that you have some interest in how people think. All right, this is who this is the role that you're going to assume. This is the role that you're going to take. In doing this task is I want you to be a person, for example, a psychologist who has an interest in understanding how people think. The audience, the target audience. All right, the target audience is going to be the actual two people that you choose because. You're going to. Do this task really for them to inform them. OK, so. You are assuming the role as some kind of expert in the area of psychology. You're you're an expert in. Analyzing how people think what they think and why they think it. And the audience is going to be the two individuals that you're going to have conversations with. Again, family, friend, colleague, doesn't matter if those two individuals know each other or not, but you need to know these people very well. You need to have a history. With these two. Now the situation for this task is you're in a position to provide insights like information, something that is useful to these two people who are close to you. And the situation here is you're being asked to compare and contrast their viewpoints, their ideas. Compare and contrast. What do they have in common? What are their differences in terms of? How they view the world, their viewpoints, their opinions. Their comments about one of the three topics. It can be beauty, it can be about beauty, it can be about education, or it can be about fake news. Again, just one, one of those topics. Now the performance, this is the, uh, the actual performance of this test that I would like for you to, to follow. Now the two people that you've chosen we need to do an interview. OK, this is a speaking listening and speaking class, so we're going. We need to try to find two people who speak some level of English again. If they are not fluent and you are speaking with them and helping them with understanding, if they use a few words in Spanish, that's fine. But I'd like for you to choose two people outside of our class that can speak English that you can have a conversation with. I'd like for you to do what's called an interview. I'd like for you to ask questions to both of these individuals. And 
they're going to give you a response. They're going to give you an answer. All right, so the type of interview, there are many different ways to do this, but I'm going to ask that you do one type of interview. Now I've shared a link. You can look at all of this if you want, but I'm going to talk today about what's called a structured interview. Now structured interview simply is a list of questions that you ask another person. They are defined before you do the interview. So you say, okay, I'm going to ask these 10 questions. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Here are my questions. I'm going to go from question one to question two to question three. And each time they're going to give, give answers. All right, so this is the type of interview I would like for you to do a structured interview where you come up and you think first, because this is going to be our first step in this task this week, this project, this is for each one of you to create a list of questions that you want to ask both individuals. Now, one of the reasons for doing a structured interview is that you compare and contrast the types of answers that you get from each question. In other words, you ask the same question to both individuals. This is very important. This is not really a conversation per se, right? It's not a what's called a unstructured or semi-structured interview where you're listening to what they say and you come up with follow up questions like we're used to doing in a conversation with our partners. This is different. This is having the same list of questions. And asking exactly the same questions, no more, no less. Asking the same questions. To both individuals. OK, this is this is why it's called a structured interview, because it's very structured in nature. You're going from question number one to question number two to question number three and so on for both interviews. So this is the type of interview. I would like all of us to to do because our goal in this task is to compare and contrast their responses. It's a little bit difficult to. Yes, go ahead. Um, do we have to record our interviews or just with the questions? OK, so yes, I would. Definitely record. You have to record the interview. All right, because uh, in a few minutes I'm going to talk about the analysis. I'm going to talk about what we need to do to analyze those responses. So yes, we need to record the responses. Now it can be a video recording or it can be. Or it can be a, an audio recording. It's always best if you can. To do a video recording. To be able to see not only hear the responses, but also see the person, uh, maybe some nonverbal communication, right? You can capture that in a video. You can see facial expressions. Using a video recording that would also help in your analysis. So yes, we need to record both uh, interviews that we that we do. All right, so the structured interview. We're all going to have a set of questions, one set of questions that we're going to ask both. Both of our participants. One of the first things I'm going to ask you to do when we finish as I finish giving you all the instructions for this project, because there's a lot of steps here, so I want to go through each one. Very carefully. But our first step is going to be to begin creating our questions for our interview. And I'm going to ask, I have a link here. I'm going to ask that you add your questions. If you go into Microsoft Teams, week four project, there's a, a new folder. This is where we're going to be for this week. We have a Word document called interview questions. Let's open up this. 
Let's open up this bad boy. And one of the first things, and you don't have to begin yet, all right, I'm just showing you where we're going to be working. But here is where we're going to add your name and just below your name, a list of your questions. OK, so you can replace this with your name and then hit enter, add a space and create your list of questions. OK, this will be our first step, our first task. Once we have a list of questions, this is also where <clears throat> I would like to also have a look or if you have questions, we want to make sure that our questions that we're asking are grammatically correct, that they're complete, that they are coherent, that the list of questions that you have make some sort of organizational sense. They have a purpose overall, not just kind of random types of questions, but they that they have a purpose. And we're very careful in the order in which we ask these questions. OK, that's another consideration. Once we have those and you can receive feedback from me, we can discuss them. We can check your grammar and overall logic. Then you can begin to conduct your interview. So the next step is to actually. Conduct the interview, record your audio or video with the two people that you know well in English. Making sure that you have enough in uh, answers in your inquiry. Right, this is an inquiry. This is you finding out information, finding out answers or responses to to other people. And when you're creating your list of questions, one of the things you need to question yourself is do, do I have enough questions, right? How many questions do I need and do I have enough? Now it's going to depend on really a couple of things. It's going to depend on the people, right? That you chose and your background knowledge, which you already know about these people. And it's also, it could depend on one of the topics that you chose. Did you choose beauty? Did you choose education? Did you choose fake news? Remember, we're only going to choose one topic. So all of the questions need to be about beauty or all of the questions need to be about education or all of the questions need to be about fake news. OK, we're not asking questions about all three or two out of the three, only one. So the questions need to be well, you need to have enough questions and the types of questions need to be appropriate to understand to get the types of responses that you want. Now, this is kind of an abstract thought, but you need to have enough questions to say, oh, OK, I've, I, I achieved what I want in this inquiry, in this questioning that I'm, I'm having. Right. Think of what do you want in general? What do you want to compare and contrast between these two? People, of course, it's about our topic up here, generally speaking, but when you get into the details, you're going to find other things, other elements or other characteristics of these people to compare and contrast. OK, so. Let me give you an example. Let's say that you choose. And this is just a random example, but let's say. That. You have two siblings, you have a brother and a sister. Let's say your brother and sister are. Somewhat older than you, let's say 10 years older than you and. One, let's say the sister has completed college, has a college degree, and let's say the brother does does not have a college degree. So you might choose those two. To interview because you want to see what kind of perspective, what kind of philosophy they have on the value of education. Your sister has gone through college and completed a degree. Maybe your brother has not. So your questions are going to, in part, 
be about understanding how they feel, their philosophy, their ideas and opinions on the value of education, right? Thinking about what it is and how it is and why it is and where it is and all of those aspects. And so that might be a reason to choose your brother and sister. You know them well. They come from, let's say, different backgrounds in terms of their education. So you want to explore that difference. OK, this is just one example, right? You can choose the people, you can choose the topic, but you're looking for something that would be interesting to compare in contrast. All right, so we're going to conduct your interview in English. Now, I'm listing here, probab probably you're going to need at least 10 questions. Now, I, I, I don't know, I'm hesitant to tell you exactly the number of questions you should have because it's going to depend on the individuals. It's going to depend on what you're comparing and contrasting. And more importantly, it's going to depend on the types of questions that you're asking. But I think 10 questions is a pretty good you know, place to start. Depending on your questions, you might choose that, to, that you need more questions, right? But you need to have enough questions for them to be specific enough to explore certain individual characteristics that you can get some detail, right? We, we want some level of detail. We don't want the questions to be too broad, too open-ended, too abstract. We want to go towards something specific. Now, you could begin with questions that are more general and lead one by one to questions that are more specific. That could be an approach, right? Or you could go right into very specific questions from the very beginning. But at the end of the day, your interview should explore very specific responses, very specific aspects of what it is that you're trying to find out. Now, you may know these people so well that you maybe you think you already know some of the answers to these questions. And it really doesn't matter if you think you know uh, the, the, how they're going to respond. Maybe they respond differently than you anticipated. That's OK either way. But I'd like for you to go through the process of interviewing. And I'd like for you to go through the process of creating what's called a structured interview. Again, this is not a, a conversation. I'm actually telling you to do something different than what we've been trying to promote almost this whole, well, not just this semester, but past semesters is trying to keep it all, keep it conversational. Try to listen and follow up with questions. I'm actually asking you not to do that for this project. I'd like for you to stick to the questions that you thought about and wrote about before the interview. So this is why we need to have considerable time and to reflect to make sure that we're, we've got good questions that are going to allow us to compare and contrast these two individuals. All right, are we, como vamos? Vamos bien, hasta ahí? Do this. Yes. Teacher, um, for the interviews, uh, if we record the interviews we're going to do, do we have to upload them somewhere or? All right, let me, uh, let me go through uh, the rest of this performance, uh, some of these steps and, and I'll, to answer your question, no, you don't have to upload the recordings okay okay all right uh you need obviously to record it and i may ask you like if we're um talking about the an analysis we'll talk about the, that here in a second i may ask you uh can you can we listen together to some of your responses so i can try to help you make suggestions about how to analyze this information so i may ask you for those some of maybe a clip, an excerpt of those recorded interviews, right? Just to help give you better feedback. All right. But uh, I'm not going to ask everyone to show evidence of having recorded it. You need the recording, though, to do the analysis. I will know from the analysis if you recorded it. It's very easy. 
to know if you did it or not. So, so please record it. Even if, if something happens and you lose the recording, ask them very nicely to to do it again, <laughs> to go through the whole same questions again, so that you get the recording. Because you need you need to capture exactly word for word how they responded. And we'll talk about that here in a minute. All right. So moving on now to the analysis. Here is where we are in our performance. We've talked about the structured interview and recording our audio and video. OK, coming up with our questions. Now we have our recorded interview and it's time to analyze. Now, what do, what do we mean by analysis? What do we analyze? You need to think of your analysis as having two parts. The first part of your analysis is going to rely on your recordings. You need to know you're going to be looking for certain responses, word for word responses that you can quote. That you can quote. Now, what I mean by quote is saying something like, according to my brother, my brother told me that, and then blah, 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 blah. Whatever my, your brother told you word for word. He told me that in education was, and you're, re, you're repeating, right, in your analysis, you're including in your analysis exactly word for word what your brother told you, or sister, or cousin, brother, parents, whatever. So part of your analysis is capturing that that level of detail. This is why we need the recording. I, I, I don't want you to paraphrase what your brother told you. I want you to directly quote the people that you're interviewing. And the only way to do that again is through the recordings. If you don't have the recordings, right? I probably most of us don't have perfect recall to be able to say exactly word for word what the person said. So again, please record your interviews. Now, the second part of the analysis is what's called your interpretation. What does it mean when your, your uh, brother or sister, whomever, they respond in this way? How do you interpret that? What, is, what does it mean? Now, your interpretation is going to rely on your prior knowledge about this person, your, your relationship with this person. You need to choose people that you know, that you have a history with. You know their personality. Maybe you know what they went through in the past because you need to rely on that information to be able to interpret their responses. So again, the analysis consists of two parts. Number one, getting their responses word for word so that you can directly quote your participants. And number two, based on your prior knowledge, based on what you know of, of this person, offer an interpretation of their results. All righty. So we've conducted the interview. We've, we've created the, the questions. We've done a recorded interview and we've analyzed our results. Now we have to present our results. We have to now inform your audience. This is going to be in the form of a Flipgrid video, a Flipgrid video. So you're going to record yourself, record a five minute. I need to add that. I did not add that here. I'll do that now. A five minute video. Now, five minute video. You may or may not think that that's a long time or not, but in most cases, if you do a really well-constructed, uh, structured interview, you're going to have a lot of information that you can analyze. In fact, you probably have a lot of information that you're analyzing. And in your analysis, you're going to choose what's most important, what's most relevant, interesting, so that when you create your video, your five-minute video, you're only including the most 
relevant, most interesting or important or surprising pieces of information. You're going to offer in your five minute video a comparing co contrast between these two people only talking about what stood out. What was surprising? Maybe there's something that you learned that you didn't know. Maybe it's something that you already knew. But it was something that you think is interesting. So part of the video, part of this analysis, right, is to distinguish, to determine. What do you want to talk about and include in the final presentation, in your final video? And what should you exclude? Part of the analysis, doing a good analysis, is actually knowing what to exclude, what to leave out, what to say, you know, this is not as important as this other piece of information that, that they told me about. So I'm going to add here, add a five minute Flipgrid video. All right, now, Notice it. Let me just review once again. All right, the the video is do not rush to the video. We have all week to complete this task. And notice that these four tasks. Coming up with your questions, conducting your interview, doing the analysis. Right and doing the final video presentation. You've got a lot of things to do before you do the video. The video is going to be very, it, it's going to reveal how well or not you did these other steps. All right, so we're, we're going to have all week. Most of this, in fact, all of this task is individual. Feel free to check and 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 consult with your classmates but but this task is an individual task where i'm going to ask that you try to choose individuals who speak english outside of our class if this is an issue let's talk about it okay um but this is what i'd like for us to work on for for this week the last thing I'll say, guys, this is going to be some things I want you to take into consideration when you're creating your, your Flipgrid video. Speak individually for four and a half to five minutes. In fact, OK, I, I did include the time here. I didn't mention it up here. Speak coherently. Speak in a logical way, in an organized way. Cohesively. We want to try to have a good flow and connect ideas from one to the next. Try to speak clearly. Try to project your voice. Enunciate. Use good intonation. Use pauses and, and pace yourself. Don't try to speak too quickly. Relax. Try to get that good, interesting, surprising information out to your audience. Also be aware of background noise, try to choose a, a place, you know, where you have more privacy, try to choose a time of day where there's less background noise to interfere that could interfere with your volume. Make sure if you can that you're speaking close to the mic, that you have good volume. Make sure you show yourself. So we would like to see your lovely faces. So make sure your cameras are on. You maintain good eye contact. Now, for our purposes, since we're all online, we should pay very close attention to looking right at the camera, looking right at that little camera on our webcam so that we're maintaining quote unquote eye contacts. Also, try to offer some kind of visual rep representation. Now, this is up to you. This could be, um, it could be a picture of the individuals. It could be a picture of the message that you're sharing. Maybe it's a, an image that represents things that you're comparing and contrasting. Right, so it's wide open. Some kind of visual that makes sense to you that relates to the message of your five minute presentation. And the final performance 
should reflect evidence of having done the analysis. Now, what I mean by that is what I said earlier. It is very obvious when you pre present your your uh, final video, it will be very obvious what kind of an analysis you did. So make sure that you're getting a lot of detail, a lot of direct quotes. You're talking about each individual person and how and how they responded specifically word for word, as well as your prior knowledge of these people to so so that we can make sense. We don't know these people, right? So when we listen to your analysis, we want to get a very good understanding of who they are. Right? And and so that's that's what I would take into consideration when you're doing your final video. All right, guys, these are the instructions. That's called unit one. It's in Canvas under week four. If you go back to the main page, so please refer to this page. This is the assignment that we're going to be working on this week. Week four, unit one project. And I'd like for us to begin working on our questions. If you need to review or if anyone has questions about what I mean by a structured interview, we can talk about that again some more. But let's go ahead and begin our task. I want to give you the rest of today to begin this task. We're going to have all day on Tuesday, all day on Wednesday, sometime on Thursday to complete this task. But please don't make the mistake of rushing to the video. This analysis is going to take time. It's going to take time to really be careful and choose the right people for our interviews. You know, uh, coming up with the right questions. I'd like to give all of you feedback on your questions, right? Even if it's just a quick look through and say, OK, those, those look great. Go for it. But I may be asking you questions like what would what do you want to compare and contrast between these two people? Besides these general categories, I may ask. If it's not obvious in the questions, I may ask you, well, what specifically do you want to compare and contrast as it relates to fake news? So try to keep that in mind as you're developing your questions to do your interview. Remember, the question should be exactly the same. No more, no less. Right? They should be exactly the same questions in the same order that you present both to both individuals, to both people that you're interviewing. All right, guys, let's go ahead and start. If you don't have any other questions, go uh, go right into, you know, uh, the uh, Word document in Microsoft Teams. You can start working in this Excel spreadsheet and start to, uh, you can add your name and start uh, coming up with some questions. When you're ready for me to take a look at your questions, let me know. We can discuss those. And if anybody has any questions, I'll be here online. Of course, jump right in and I'll try to address your question. We will uh, continue this way for the next, uh, I guess we have about an hour left for today uh, to begin. Again, we're going to have all week to complete this task. So really spend the time in each of those four steps so that your end video, your, end, your final presentation will reflect a lot of insights and a lot of good information, interesting information, maybe something surprising. All right, guys, let's go ahead and begin. And uh, we'll close the class at 1140. We have to put our names in. Um, bueno, como están ordenados en la lista. Or it can be. Um, the the order is. It doesn't matter really. I uh, just choose any of these headings and add your name. Uh, uh, later, I'll, if we need to organize it, we will, but it's not uh, important to write it out alphabetically or any type of order. Just choose any of these headings. That's fine. Okay, thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Teacher, can you tell me if you think my questions are OK or if I need to change them? All right. Uh, have you, uh, Fer, have you taken a look at the group feedback that I included in the Word document? Yes. Yes. All right. So what do you think? Looking at the first question, what is education for you? 
if you, uh, yeah, do you see where I talk about that? And I'll highlight it here. If you're looking here at my screen, do you know, do you see what I mean with this, uh, with this point? Oh, okay, so I have to put uh, a question that makes it a little bit more longer and not so short. <laughs> Think of it more like open and closed instead of short or long. So think okay. of how you start a question. The way in which you start a question indicates whether you are asking an open question or a closed question. So for example, an open question would be a question like, how has education, all right, or why is or has education, okay. or when, or where, so the close question. My first question for how would you describe education? Well, first, maybe. Well, OK, so first of all, I think the first thing I would do is take a look at all the questions that you have and just label them. Are they open or closed? First of all. OK, and then. Find. Open questions that help you obtain the same information that you're trying to get, but in doing so, the open questions are likely to give you deeper, more specific responses. Let me give you an example. If you ask me a question, what is education for you? Yeah, I mean, that's a general question, right? That's it's, but, but think of, that's almost too general. Think of like a how. How has education been impactful in your professional life or in your personal life? Or, But what we're doing is we're trying to figure out, based on what you know of these people, you're, it's forcing you to be a little bit more specific and directed towards something that you want to compare and contrast. Because probably tomorrow I'm going to ask everyone, Based on the questions that you've come up with today or yesterday, I may ask you, what do you want to compare and contrast? So as you are coming up with the questions, ask yourself what specifically? I know you're talking about education, right? Maybe the importance of education, but I want you to think specifically on based on these people that you've chosen. <clears throat> what specifically do you want to to compare and contrast? and let these questions help you achieve that comparison. All right, so again, it's going to depend on your prior knowledge of these of these people. And the people that you're thinking, right, you you probably know something about their educational background perhaps, or maybe you know something about their professional life that you want to know something more about their educational life to see if it impacted their professional life or, or, or not. And so think of the how questions and think of the why questions, when and where and how. The closed questions, the questions that I would suggest that you try to uh, ignore are those yes or no questions. Because if you ask a question, is education the most important thing in your life? They say, yeah. And probably what you're asking is a why question. Why do you think education is important in your life? And this is what I wrote up here. You can have a two part question. You can say, why do you think education is important for you to become a profession in this field? Because you know these people. So if they're a teacher, if they are a construction worker, if they are a doctor, whatever profession they are, include that in your question. How has education helped you to become a better doctor? Or how has formal or informal education helped contribute to you professionally as a doctor, as a nurse, as a teacher, as a lawyer, whatever? So notice I'm being I'm you're digging in deeper to the types of information 
that are very specific to these two people that you're trying to compare and contrast. OK, does that does that make sense? Yes, teacher. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, the only other thing I would add is the question, where does education start? Where does it start? When does it start? How does it start? So I'm, I'm just thinking out loud here and you can th do that as well. Which question word would best help you answer this type of question? And again, think of very specifically to the people that you're trying to compare and contrast and what aspects either of their histories of them as people. What specifically are you trying to compare and contrast? Tomorrow I'll probably ask you guys to include that here. Um, but I think it's important to think now when you're developing these questions, those aspects, your, we call these points of comparison. What are the points of comparison for your interview, for your analysis, and later for your final video? Okay, so I would try to keep those in mind, the, the points of comparison. In fact, I'm going to add that here to the notes. What are your points of comparison? If you feel that you want to add those here now, fine. If not, tomorrow we can discuss those again. But do you see what I mean between the differences between open and closed questions? Because you're going to have one opportunity, right, to ask these questions. So we want the best types of questions and the best content type questions that are going to generate a more, uh, more meaningful, more specific type of response. OK, does that does that help uh, fit? Yes, teacher. OK. Uh, teacher, what does that mean? Only we have one chance. What I mean, uh, Leo, is when you do a structured interview. When you do a structured interview, you are basically presenting questions, the exact same questions in the exact same order to different participants. In our case, two different participants, two different people. You're going to ask exactly the same questions in exactly the same order. OK, no follow up questions. So what I mean by you only have one chance. OK, what I mean by that is. You're going to be in the moment asking questions, so if if you ask your questions, OK, let's say you have 10 questions and you finish, you you go back to the recording, you start to analyze and you say, oh, I forgot to ask this question. Or I should have asked these questions in a different order or whatever. You might go back and say, oh, I should have done something differently. That's what I mean by you really have just one choice, uh, one chance because you really want to come up with the best questions in the best order so that you get the best responses to help you compare and contrast these two people. That's what I mean. You see what I mean? Uh, yes, teacher. Already, uh, as you say, only we have to ask these questions to to the people we know. It could be a friend or a some member of our family, right? That's right. Somebody that you know well. It can be a family member. It can be a friend. It can be someone that you work with. Anybody that you feel that you know Peter, something about. But this person, it have to speak in English. Yeah, we need to try to find someone who speaks some level of, of English as much as possible. Right? Right. If they if they aren't, if they don't have to be really fluent. If they make mistakes or they say certain words in Spanish, you can translate it to English. But try your best to ask the questions in English and encourage them to try to provide you a response in English. And if uh, this is a problem, you can do this on the phone. You can, you know, it doesn't, it can be someone that you 
live with. It can be somebody, maybe a family member that lives somewhere else. If you can meet online to have the interview, you don't have to meet face to face, of course. It could be a friend. So yeah, the idea is to try to find someone who speaks uh, English. Um, teacher, do you think the question, would you describe education as a personal necessity? It's all right or? Uh, let's see, which one, which question? Uh, the one that says, would you describe education as a personal necessity? All right, so what kind of, what kind of response do you think? What would be the first word out of the person's mouth answering this question? Maybe it could be like, no, or yes. Exactly. So that's what's called it's because a yes or no question. I don't know how to make question. it a little bit more longer. I All don't right. know how to make it a more open question. All right, so we have here, would you describe education as a personal necessity? All right. So, um, can you tell me more about the people that you want to compare and contrast? Just to yeah, get, um, to I context. want to interview my, my mom and my aunt. And my mom, like, it's a person that thinks that you should always, like, um, see education as, as something positive as something that's going to help you in your life. But my aunt, in the other hand, she's like, education, it's not that important. Like you should not be crazy for being educated. So that's mm -hmm. what I, I'm trying to compare there, like the right. both points of view. All right, All right. I'm gonna ask uh, some other questions here and you tell me uh, it's if you want to, you know, if you want to give this information or, or not, but I, I want, you to see uh, context here in this particular case. Does is there any difference in the educational level and and the professional level or the professions, I guess, between these two two people? I'm thinking both in terms of their formal educational experience and also their professional experience. Are there any similarities or differences between these two uh, people? Yeah. Um. Well. Both of them, uh, their highest level of students, I think it is, mm -hmm. uh, it's the university. They both study okay. at university, uh, but my mom uh, studied university online. She didn't attend like face-to-face -face classes. And my aunt, by the other hand, she studied um, um, medicine in the in the university here in the UA. Mm -hmm. so I think that's like the only difference I can see what about professionally uh, my aunt it's um, a nurse and my mom it's a uh... well she uh, she studied uh, licenciatura en administración de empresas. I don't know how to say that in English. Business but, administration. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And uh, well, so so you've mentioned a couple of things here that that could help you figure out what to include more in this this one question. Do you want to compare? one person who had an experience with online education versus face to face or a more traditional quote unquote traditional yes. type of education that's one thing um do you want to compare the the impact of those experiences from ed about education in terms of their uh, their profession right you mentioned one's a nurse and your mom whatever her profession is if she has a profession if she's working then that could also be a point uh, that you include in your questions about you're you're still focusing on ed education, right? But education and profession, right? One's profession is very much related. I mean, that could be something that you're bringing into, right? Your uh, your interviews, so that it's something like online versus traditional education, and or how it impacts 
one's profession. And so those are the things. What I'm doing is I'm trying to combine other aspects of education based on what you know already about these two people so that when you're coming up with questions, you could have something like, do you think having an online education has put you in, in this, uh, has offered the same opportunities? Well, that's a yes or no question. How has education, how has your education online contributed to your professional experience? And why? Or maybe you have another question, why? And you might ask something very similar to the nurse, all right? Uh, how, how has a traditional education helped you be better uh, prepared to enter into the nursing fields? Um, and, you know, you could ask questions like, how, how can online educational programs help help uh, individuals enter into the nursing field? You're you're turning, you're asking questions from different perspectives. If you're asking the nurse who has a traditional education experience, you can actually ask that same person what he or she thinks about online education and whether or not you know, or how that could contribute to becoming a better nurse practitioner or, right? So notice here, I'm asking a lot of questions about these two people because these are the types of questions, right? That you can, or keywords, if you want to think of it like that. What's the best combination of keywords that you could try to include to narrow down and really direct your questions, your open questions, so that they're very relevant to the backgrounds or histories of these, these two people. Okay, so I think I have to like search for that, right? Like to compare like the online classes versus like the face-to-face -face traditional classes and how they impact like their life, not only the professional life, but also like the daily life. <laughs> well, it could, it could be. Yeah, you, you decide okay. what we're asking, what I'm, what we're talking about here, uh, Fer, is what's called the scope. It's like how wide or how narrow uh, do we want to be when we get these responses? Because at the end of the day, we need to compare and contrast something. So just keep that in mind. What am I comparing and contrasting when I ask these sets of questions? And, you know, that's why the combination of questions is really important too, because we can't get everything we need in just a one question. So think very carefully the order, how you want to organize those questions, what kind of questions, so that it makes some kind of logical, uh, it has some kind of logic and it achieves your goal overall when you put all your questions together, right? And so again, it could be face-to-face -face online, but it also could be related to their, their professions or some other aspect. You know, there might be something you haven't talked about yet that, that is very characteristic of these two individuals that you are also interested in exploring as it relates to education. It could be relationships, it could be professional experience, it could be uh, things they do, their family, life, etc. All righty, does that help? Yes. Okay. Uh, teacher, so other thing, we must consider the questions, right, and the time exactly because in Canvas it says we have to speak four and a half to five minutes, right? All right, so I'm going to share my screen, uh, Leo, so we can look at it together, the uh, the instructions. I want to I want to draw your attention here to the performance section. Now, 
I basically have listed here four steps that I want you to follow when you're doing this project. The very last step is the creation of a video in Flipgrid. All right, and I'm going to ask that you present five minutes in this video. The video is your analysis. That's step three. OK, so the first, the third, this step here, your analysis, you're going to have to just figure out what to include and what to exclude. What do you want to mention that's most interesting, that's most important? The video should not include every piece of information that you get. It should not include every piece of information that you analyzed. So I want you to be selective and say, okay, como este me sirve, este no, este sí, este no. So when you finish, you only share in the video the most interesting, the most surprising bits of information in your comparison that you want to share with others. The interview, step two, I'm working backwards here. The interview needs to last as long as it needs to last. If the video lasts one hour, that's how long it lasts. It depends on the types of questions you ask. And it depends on the kinds of responses that you get from the participants. The participants might talk for a long time or the participants might not. So you need to make sure that your questions, this is the first step, this is what we're working on today, is that you have not only the right kinds of questions, not only the questions presented in the right order, but also the, the, the correct number or that you have enough questions so that you get a lot of good information. All right, so there are two things here. I'm not, I'm not uh, suggesting a certain time for the interview. The interview will be as long as it needs to be to address your list of questions that we're working on today. The five minute video is simply the highlights. Think of it like a movie trailer. When you watch movies, sometimes we like to watch trailers so that we can see what the general idea is. We know something about the movie. Maybe it shows the highlights of the movie. This is what our five minute video in Flipgrid kind of is, is like. It's, it's the highlights. It's the most important piece of information, the compare and contrast that is surprising and most interesting from your interviews. Okay, does that make sense, Leo? Yes, teacher. All righty. Teacher, if we don't have, if we have to avoid using what questions and which questions, for my question number three, how was the education you got? Is that clear? Because I don't know if, if that's like understandable or not. <laughs> OK, guys, so just a couple of closing thoughts here as we uh, finish for today. Today we started working on our projects, our uh, project for this week for unit one. And uh, we went through the instructions. And uh, today we started our project by focusing on the types of questions that we want to use to do an interview. Now, what I'm looking at here, and I'm leaving some comments in the Word document, is I want you to pay close attention to the types of questions that you're including. Try to Try to see which question that you have is are open questions and which questions you have are closed questions. Try to focus mainly, if not at all, try to focus all of your questions on, on open questions. Why does something happen? How does something happen? When does something happen? Where might something happen? And those are going to be the better types of questions to 
generate a, a more, uh, I guess, a more specific response, a deeper response. Whereas closed questions, you're likely to get a very short answer and you're likely not to get uh, enough information to do a very specific compare, compare and contrast. So take a look at the questions and see if you can distinguish between yes, no questions. Yes, no questions become with, uh, begin usually with uh, do or does, or it can begin with is, the verb to be. All right, and when a lot of times when you have some, this is very common to have like a yes or no question and then followed by a why. Just begin with the why question. Instead of asking a yes, no question, a closed question, offer a why question from the very beginning. All right, see so if you can try to avoid yes or no questions. Um, which questions also are usually closed? Which, which, which do you prefer, this or that? I prefer this. Now, then they might ask, well, why? So try to think of what you're comparing. Tomorrow we're going to talk more about points of comparison. Try to find personal aspects, maybe something related to their personal histories, their backgrounds, it could be professional background, their, their educational background, things that they're interested in. Try to find something that you want to compare and contrast between these two individuals, not just the overall topic of education or fake news or beauty, but something that's more specific to the individuals. And then based on that, include in your questions those characteristics, those personal histories, those backgrounds that you, that you already know about these people. This is why it's important to choose somebody that you know well so that you don't have to do any research. You know these people. You know maybe where they went to school. Maybe you know their perspective on, you know, certain things that uh, relate to your questioning. So bring those into your questions, something that's specific to these people that you already know about, and that's going to help you to avoid really general questions. Right. We don't want to ask any questions like, what do you think about fake news? Do you think, what do you think, how, how is education important? Those are really general. They don't really address very specific personal characteristics, personal histories, and so on. All right, so tomorrow, guys, we'll pick up where we left off. We'll continue with our questioning. Try to give this some thought, reflect on these people so that your questions can really be directed towards those points that you want to compare and contrast. Make sure you have your questions ready tomorrow. We'll, I'll give you the entire class to work on this, but also to ask questions or to review specific questions that you have already developed if you want specific feedback on that. But do please take a look at the group feedback that I've included in the Word document. I'll continue to add information here, but this I think uh, is worth looking at and uh, comparing the questions that you have here as we uh, modify our questions before we do our, our interview. All right, guys, we'll stop there for today. Enjoy the rest of your Valentine's Day, and we'll see you all tomorrow. See you, teacher. Thank you. See you, teacher.